Hello, very warm welcome to Middle East Matters. I'm Sanam Shanti. Coming up on this week's program, a close look at Iran's looming environmental crisis and an attack against the country's environmental defenders, seemingly caught up in a political power struggle. Also coming up, animated TV series Flavors of Iraq by Farhat Alani. In this episode, our protagonist learns about the devastating toll the embargo had taken on Baghdad's hospitals. Thank you for watching Middle East Matters. We start with Iran, where the environment is faced with a looming crisis. The country is grappling with everything from a prolonged drought to poor water quality to chronic pollution. Now, according to experts, various regions even risk becoming uninhabitable and they blame mismanagement. Others say the return of sanctions could accelerate the crisis. Tehran enveloped in a gray cloud, hiding the mountains overlooking the Iranian capital. The cause, air pollution, which worsens during the winter. Traffic jams are a regular occurrence in the city with the exhaust from about 5 million vehicles and 3.5 million motorcycles contributing to 80 percent of the pollution. And this smog is deadly. Out of a population of around 80 million, about 20,000 people die each year from bad air. Another pressing environmental problem, drought. To varying degrees, 96 percent of the country has been affected. On this map, the areas in red represent places where water has vanished. Lake Urumia has become a symbol of this problem. Over the past two decades, it shrunk to just 10 percent of its former size. Five to six years ago, there was still a lot of water in the lake, and a lot of people came here to have fun. There were many boats, and the area was very popular. But the lake is evaporating. Boating activities have completely stopped. Lakes and rivers in the country are drying up everywhere. Several factors are contributing to the current environmental crisis, climate change, population increase, it's more than doubled in two decades, international sanctions, which observers say have accelerated the problems, expanded agricultural production and poor management of aquifer resources. 92 percent of the water pumped from a series of dams is used by the country's agricultural sector, and more dams are under construction. Water rationing and agricultural hardships, Iranians are already feeling the drought's effects. There is less and less water coming down from the mountains. Uh, there are shortages of water for agriculture in a lot of areas. Farmers are being forced off their land because they don't have enough water uh, for their crops. A situation that has fueled protests in several cities. Scientists warn if nothing is done, Iran could reach a state of extreme water stress by 2040. Now, staying with that story, a team of prominent conservationists were jailed in Iran back in 2018. These eight men and women have been accused of spying and uh, various national security crimes at closed-door hearings. They've been charged with what's known as corruption on earth, which is punishable by a minimum of 10 years in prison or even death. Their imprisonment has faced a wave of criticism from rights groups, members of the European Parliament, scientists and... Last but not least, actor and environmentalist Leonardo DiCaprio, who took to Twitter earlier this year to call on his followers to stand by those risking their lives to protect the future of our planet. For more on this, uh, let's bring in Iranian scientist Kaveh Madani. He was uh, formerly the deputy head of Iran's uh, Department of Environment. Thank you uh, so much for being with us. Firstly, uh, I'd like to delve into that report that we just heard. Carver, what's really behind Iran's environmental crisis? Is it mismanagement or is there a direct link to sanctions? It's absolutely the result of decades of bad management and, and policy making based on a wrong perception of development. And it's not unique to Iran, it's happening in, in the whole region. Um, you rely on, on structural and engineering solution and think the sky is the limit and you can buy technology and develop further and further. And at some point you realize that the nature capacity is limited 
and uh, but but by then it's it's always too late to to address the problem properly so then you get into the crisis management mode uh, all those problems sanctions uh, climate change enemies of iran might might matter and have uh, play a role but it's it's a human induced problem and it's mostly local a human induced problem but of course as i mentioned earlier in addition to that a number of environmentalists have been jailed in iran since last year you were also detained briefly. Why is environmentalism deemed to be such a threat inside the country? It is still very hard to read um, the minds of Iran's revolutionary guards and why they're so sensitive. Uh, but uh, my understanding is that both Iran and its enemies have realized that environment has a unique power of uniting everyone, regardless of their ideology, their ethnicity, and so on. And and uh, environment, which was um, a safe space for a while, was becoming uh, dangerous because it was bringing people, forming some sort of opposition uh, against the government, questioning the, uh, the government on certain policies. But the eight people who are in jail never had any record of anything political. And that is the strange part. Why them? Why were they picked up among everyone else. And something really doesn't add up here, does it? We have the judiciary on the one hand saying they are guilty of espionage, and on the other hand, the Ministry of Intelligence, various lawmakers like Mahmoud Sadari, saying that they are in fact innocent. This clearly shows the power struggle within the system. So on one side, we have the IRGC with its own intelligence unit, and on the other side, we have the government. I myself was on the government working uh, as the deputy head of Iran's Department of Environment, approved by the Ministry of Intelligence, but the other side uh, thought that I was a spy and, and was insisting on it. The same thing for these uh, these people who are now, I think, the victims of um, this power struggle and this battle. The IRGC wants to prove that the government is, is incapable and incompetent and cannot identify the the spies and the, the national security threats, and, and, and we see what the, the result is. And it's getting worse and worse. We were expecting them to be released by now, but the charges are getting worse. Now, I want to talk about one of those environmentalists in particular, one of those victims who, beyond the love that she has for her profession, has quite a few things in common with you, Kava Madani. We're talking about Nilu Farbayani, who also worked for the UN, she went back to Iran to do this work, as you had done, and of course you were both detained. It's so sad. I was asking her uh, indeed to come and help us um, with the Department of Environment. I'm, I'm glad that she didn't come because she would have had more charges. But but us are even more vulnerable because they cannot appreciate the fact that we, we love our country, we care about their nature, and, and, and we, we care about the next generation. So their currency is different. They think about money, income, and other things, and they don't appreciate the fact that some people care about other things and care about their country and want to help. And and this this fact that they don't understand me or myself is is resulting in what you're seeing. And I want to briefly discuss another victim. Of course, that's a suspicious death in prison of the head of the Persian Wildlife Heritage Foundation, Kavus, Sayed Amami. Do you think at any point there'll be an investigation? It's um, hard to read the minds of uh, IRGC, but I don't think that would be the case. Uh, the fact that he has died has even made the case uh, more complicated because the IRGC now wants to prove that something is wrong with these people. Lastly, and again, very briefly, I want to circle back to Iran's environmental crisis. It's a scene that's become heavily pro politicized even. Any hope for the future? We have to remain hopeful. But what they are doing is confusing NGOs, environmental activists and experts, and they're losing hope. Lo loss of hope means destruction of environment. Kaveh Madani, one of Iran's most prominent scientists, thank you so much. Uh, for speaking to us here on Middle East Matters. Now, from Iran, we hop over to Iraq for another episode of Flavors of Iraq, an animation series by Franco-Iraqi journalist Farat Alani. In 1995, the Chicago Bulls lost to the Orlando Magic in the semifinals of the U.S. Basketball Championship. Back in Baghdad, the event captured the imagination of my cousin Mezen and I. And as we discussed the game, Mezen called a foolhardy dare. Which of us could jump the highest?
behind the wheel, my cousin Saad ran through every red light. We rushed to hospital, a hospital under embargo. The embargo does not restrict the importation of food or pharmaceutical products. But Iraqis are running out of currency and their assets abroad have been frozen. As a result, the health system has collapsed and people are quietly dying in Baghdad's hospitals. I finally got to see a doctor. The doctors said I needed stitches, but without any anesthetic. There wasn't enough for everyone. My cousin managed to obtain sedation. The doctor sewed me up. I didn't feel a thing. I asked my cousin how much it cost him. 100,000 dinars, 30 times the average wage of a civil servant. I thought about the next patients who wouldn't be able to afford such a high price, their pain during the operation. I learned that the embargo had fed corruption and the black market. Hardship was everywhere. this week's show with the Red Hot Chili Peppers who played to an audience of 10,000 under the Great Pyramids of Giza in Egypt. This is uh, the band's first ever performance in the country and they certainly made it a night to remember, offering a fitting cover of Radiohead's Pyramid Song. Now make sure you catch us next week for a special edition of Middle East Matters that uh, we'll be bringing you from an exhibition devoted to Tutankhamun here in the French capital.